you wake up, he's raping you. Hands are on your neck. He pinches here and it, it makes it so I can't swallow him. Does he Marissa Duvois told one story, but the blood spatter evidence told a completely different story, and she had to change her version of events. But what is blood spatter? How do you read these patterns? What are the different types of spatter stains that experts look at? Well, we've got our own experts to do that for you right here, right now. Mike Brooks, Joseph Scott Morgan. So let's do that. Let's take a look first here. And this is a wide shot. Now, you conducted an experiment where you smashed uh, this sponge with this red liquid on it to replicate the type of staining in this case. So can you identify for us the different types of stains that are here in the experiment that you did? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my colleagues and I put this together uh, at the Center for Applied Forensics. And what we have is a, 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 a wide shot of uh, this distribution of this medium velocity blood spatter. Where's the medium velocity? Is the that down here? The medium velocity is right here. Okay. We also have it here. You can see it kind of eking up like this. And that's medium velocity is from the hammer. It's from a hammer, and it's going to be generated by blunt force, by blunt gotcha. force weapon. Yes, absolutely. Well, what are the other uh, stains that uh, we have here? Here we've got a bit of cast off, and again, continuing, continuing over here. Over here, we have more cast off as well as some more medium. Okay, and then there's one other type of stain, right? And that's yeah, the, we uh, have a passive, a passive stain, which is consistent with somebody taking an instrument that is, in fact, blood-soaked, such as a hammer, and holding it over the area and having it drip. We have some of these displayed on the table. Okay, all right, let's now take a closer look at cast-off as we begin with cast-off. Uh, explain exactly what cast-off is again. Right, uh, let's just imagine. You need just a hammer like for this. it? <laughs> it's as you go back. After you hit, then you go back. You've got the blood already, and it's casting off on whatever may be around it. And let's just imagine, uh, for people at home, if you take a paintbrush, dip it in a, in, a, in a paint bucket, and you were to throw it over your shoulder like this, it's the same principle. It's going to fling off the tip as opposed to a directed spray. Okay, so how can you tell if it's cast off? If you look at uh, something like this, what, what is... Uh... Well, cast off is not going to have the same telltale tails on it that say the medium velocity will that's generated with a great amount of force where you have this blood that's blasting off and it's got the little tips and points. This is going to be uh, a more uh, with less velocity as it's coming up, but as you're coming down, the leverage is generating, the leverage is generating high, uh, a higher velocity. Okay, so we take a look at it. This is really a close-up here. Right. And what is significant in the cast-off stain here? Well, what's really significant is it puts, it puts the perpetrator it locates the perpetrator relative to the victim. In this case, what we have demonstrated here is that we literally have a pattern of cast off that crosses over the medium velocity that strikes across this way. We have the cast off that's over the top, which is consistent with someone standing over an individual, striking them, it blasting off, and then the blood casting off to the ceiling. All right, medium velocity. This is, is probably the most important here um, in, in determining uh, what happened. And these are very, very unique, aren't they? Yeah, they are very unique, uh, Vin. And you can see, you can see the little points that I was referring to right here, very well demonstrated. All right, this, let's, get a, let's get a closer look at that. Yeah, sure. Go, at the medium velocity, you can really see right. the points here, right? Oh, boy, you sure can. And such as in this area right here, this gives you an idea of direction of travel, all right? So we have a particular angle that we can plug into this to give us a relational, a relational, uh, uh, a relationship between the victim and the perpetrator. This is to the other side of what would be the bed. So you've got blood that is literally spraying all over the place. And the most important thing is whoever was involved in this would be covered with blood as well. And you know, look at the, the, the shape of these much different than the cast off, right? Yes, absolutely. We have these little elliptical, these little elliptical tips on the top uh, that are pointing in the direction of the flight of the blood droplet itself. Uh, let's talk about these types of stains, uh, passive stains. What's a, what's a passive stain? A passive stain is where you're in a static position or a standstill position with the item, and it literally drops. Think about having a bloody nose, yeah. blood dropping to the ground. Same principle. Okay, so that's what we have going on down here. We get a little bit closer. Uh, we can see some, some more of these as well. And we get even closer, you can see the, the, the stains and what they look yeah, like. And we have passive right in this area right in this area, but if you look for the ones with the little tails on them. Yeah, like that. Exactly, just like that. That's indicative of medium velocity blood spatter.
I'm learning. And it gives I'm you learning. direction. It also gives you directionality, mm -hmm. which is one of the things that the attorney mentioned in the case. Absolutely. Okay. Now we take a look at the three next to each other. You can see uh, that there are differences in the types of, of stains. These are seem rounder. These have the tail on them. And right. how about the shape of those? Yeah, they're they're essentially round. They have less velocity, so you're not going to have the disruption of the form as much as you will gotcha. with medium velocity. The quicker they are, the more they sort of Absolutely. angle that way. Yep. Yep. Got it. All right. Now. Uh, how about the lamp in this case? What sort of impact did that have on the scene? Let's talk about the lamp and the perpetrator. One of the things that we're going to be looking at is an object, an intermediate object, is going to block the blast of blood just like a body will. Say the individual that is on top of this person that is hammering them, their body is going to contain the spray as well as any kind of object. So you'll have a blank space on the adjoining wall where the... So you can almost place the person where they were at the time based upon the pattern behind them yeah, or the absolutely. lack of pattern or behind them. Or the lack them. of pattern behind them. And that's crucial in this case. Fascinating stuff. All right, now how about the hammer? Let's get back to the hammer. This is the one you used in the experiment. Right. Um, a much clearer picture than we have from from court, but it seems that you can get a lot of information from that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We've already talked about fingerprints. We've talked about DNA, uh, and we have both DNA. We have the DNA of the perpetrator, potentially DNA of the victim. Hair can attach to this. Uh, but uh, most importantly, uh, we have this copious amount of blood that's here. Uh, this is not a clean event. And uh, so my question is, uh, where did all of this blood go? Uh, keep in mind, Ben, we're absent the body. The, this gentleman was removed from the scene. Right, because he was still alive. Exactly, and taken to the hospital. So we don't, as investigators, have a central point of reference as, as say, for instance, if we have a homicide case.